Hello, fourth graders. We are going to start Stone Fox. So you'll need your book and your packet to, to go along with the, for today. We're going to read a chapter, pause and do a little work, read chapter two, do a little bit of work, and then we'll go over your homework. So let's open up our books to the first uh, page of chapter one. Okay. Chapter one is called Grandfather. Okay. Remember, we did a little bit of research about the setting of this in Wyoming on a potato farm, okay? So chapter one, Grandfather. One day, Grandfather wouldn't get out of bed. He just lay there and stared at the ceiling and looked sad. At first, Little Willie thought he was playing. Little Willie lived with his grandfather on a small potato farm in Wyoming. It was hard work living on a potato farm, but it was also a lot of fun, especially when Grandfather felt like playing. Like the time Grandfather dressed up as the scarecrow as the scarecrow in the garden. It took Little Willie an hour to catch on. Boy, did they laugh. Grandfather laughed so hard he cried. And when he cried, his beard filled up with tears. Grandfather always got up really early in the morning. So early that it was still dark outside. He would make a fire. Then he would make breakfast and call Little Willie. Hurry up or you'll be eaten with the chickens, he would say. Then he would throw his head back and laugh. Uh. Once Little Willie went to, back to sleep, when he woke up, he found his plate out in the chicken coop. It was picked clean. He never slept late after that, it, that is, until this morning. For some reason, Grandfather had forgotten to call him. That's when Little Willie discovered that Grandfather was still in bed. There could be only one explanation. Grandfather was playing. It was another trick. Or was it? Get up, Grandfather, Little Willie said. I don't want to play anymore. But Grandfather didn't answer. Little Willie ran out of the house. A dog was sleeping on the front porch. Come on, searchlight, Little Willie cried out. The dog jumped to his feet, and together they ran off down the road. Searchlight was a big black dog. She had a white spot on her forehead the size of a silver dollar. She was an old dog, actually born on the same day as Little Willie, which was over ten years ago. A mile down the road, they came to a small log cabin surrounded by tall trees. Doc Smith was sitting in a rocking chair under one of the trees, reading a book. Doc Smith, the little Willie called out. He was out of breath. Come quick. What seems to be the matter, Willie? The doctor asked, continuing to read. Doc Smith had snow white hair and wore a long black dress. Her skin was tan and her face was covered with wrinkles. Grandfather won't answer me, little Willie said. Probably just another trick, Doc Smith replied. Nothing to worry about, but he's still in bed. Doc Smith turned a page and continued to read. How late did you two stay up last night? We went to bed early, real early. No singing or music or anything. Doc Smith stopped reading. Your grandfather went to bed without playing his harmonica? She asked. Little Willie nodded. Doc Smith shut her book and stood up. Hitch up Rex for me, Willie, she said. I'll get my bag. Rex was Doc Smith's horse. He was a handsome palomino. Little Willie hitched Rex to the wagon and they rode back to Grandfather's farm. Searchlight ran ahead, leading the way and barking. Searchlight enjoyed a good run. Grandfather was just the same. He hadn't moved. Searchlight put her big front paws up on the bed and rested her head on Grandfather's chest. She licked his beard, which was full of tears. Doc Smith proceeded to examine Grandfather. She used just about everything in her little black bag. What's that for? Little Willie asked. What are you doing now? Must you ask so many questions? Doc Murphy said. Grandfather said it's good to ask questions. Doc Smith pulled a long silver object from her doctor's bag. What's that for? Little Willie asked. Hush. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. When Doc Smith had finished her examination, she put everything back into her little black bag. Then she walked over to the window and looked out at the field of potatoes. After a moment, she asked, how's the crop this year, Willie? Grandfather says it's the best ever. Doc Smith rubbed her wrinkled face. What's wrong with him? Little Willie asked. Do you owe anybody money? She asked. No, Little Willie answered. What's wrong? Why won't you tell me what's wrong? That's just it, she said. There is nothing wrong with him. You mean he's not sick? Medically, he's as healthy as an ox. Could move to be a hundred if he wanted to. I don't understand, Little Willie said. Doc Smith took a deep breath, and then she began. It happens when a person gives up, gives up on life, for whatever reason, starts up here in the mind first, then it spreads to the body. 
It's a real sickness, all right. And there's no cure except in the person's own mind. I'm sorry, child, but it appears that your grandfather just doesn't want to live anymore. Little Willie was silent for a long time before he spoke. But what about fishing at the rodeo and turkey dinners? Doesn't he want to do those things anymore? Grandfather shut his eyes and tears rolled down his cheeks and disappeared into his beard. I'm sure he does, Doxma said, putting her arm around Little Willie. He must be something else. Little Willie stared at the floor. I'll find out. I'll find out what's wrong and make it better. You'll see. I'll make Grandfather want to live again. The searchlight barked loudly. I'm going to pause there for a moment, okay? So I want you to get your packet out, and we're going to open it to, to this page on Chapter 1. We're going to make some connections about things that we might have with the book so far. Connections help us relate to the story so we can better understand it. So we can have text to self, text to world, or text to text. Let's see, a text to self. I'm thinking about with me, my grandpa got sick when I was younger. My grandpa was sick and kind of couldn't really get out of bed at times. So that's my connection. You can pause it while you make yours. Maybe you have a different text to self, something that works for you. How can you relate to the story so far? All right, now a text to world. Well, I'm thinking that we read about potato farms. We did a whole bunch of research and learned about potato farms. Maybe you're making a connection to, uh, you read something about other grandparents getting sick in the news. And lastly, a text to text. Something in this story that kind of reminds you of another story. I'm thinking Doc Smith, Reminds me of Doc Murphy from Shiloh. Maybe you have another text-to-text -text connection. Does it remind you of any other stories, anything so far? Stories that you've read? I think to pause the video if you need more time to do this page, okay? When you're ready, unpause it, and we will keep reading with chapter 2. All right, so chapter two then. Little Willie. A 10 year old boy cannot run a farm, but you can't tell a 10 year old boy that, especially a boy like Little Willie. Grandfather grew potatoes, and that's exactly what Little Willie was going to do. The harvest was just weeks away, and Little Willie was sure that if the crop was a good one, Grandfather would get well. Hadn't Grandfather been overly concerned about the crop this year? Had he insisted that every square inch of land be planted? Had he gotten up in the middle of the night to check the irrigation? Gonna be our best ever, Willie, he had said. And he had said it over and over again. Yes, after the harvest, everything would be all right. Little Willie was sure of it. But Doc Smith wasn't. He's getting worse, she said three weeks later. It's best to face these things, Willie. Your grandfather's going to die. He'll get better, you'll see. Wait till after the harvest. Doc Smith shook her head. I think you should consider letting Mrs. Peacock in town take care of him, like she does with other sickly folk. He'll be in good hands until the end comes. Doc Smith stepped up into the wagon. You can come live with me until we make plans. She looked at Searchlight. I'm sure there's a farmer in these parts who needs a good work, Doc. Searchlight growled, causing Doc Smith's horse Rex to pull the wagon forward a few feet. Believe me, Willie, it's better this way. No! shouted little Willie. We're a family, don't you see? We gotta stick together. Searchlight barked loudly, causing the horse to rear up on its hind legs and then take off running. Doc Smith jammed her foot on the brake, but it didn't do any good. The wagon disappeared down the road in a cloud of dust. Little Willie and Searchlight looked at each other, and then little Willie broke out laughing. Searchlight joined him by barking again. Little Willie knelt down, took Searchlight by the ears, and looked directly into her eyes. She had the greenest eyes you've ever seen. I won't ever give you away, ever, I promise. He put his arms around the dog's strong neck and held her tightly. I love you, Searchlight. And Searchlight understood, for she had heard those words many times before. That evening, Little Willie made a discovery. He was sitting at the foot of Grandfather's bed, playing the harmonica. 
He wasn't as good as Grandfather by a long shot, and whenever he missed a note, Searchlight would put her head back and howl. Once, when Little Willie was way off key, Searchlight actually grabbed the harmonica in her mouth and ran out of the room with it. Do you want me to play some more? Little Willie asked Grandfather, knowing very well that Grandfather would not answer. Grandfather had not talked, not one word, for over three weeks. But something happened that was almost like talking. Grandfather put his hand down on the bed with the palm facing upward. Little Willie looked at the hand for a long time and then asked in a whisper, Does that mean yes? Grandfather closed his hand slowly and then opened it again. Little Willie rushed to the side of his bed. His eyes were wild with excitement. What's the sign for no? Grandfather turned his hand over and laid it flat on the bed. Palm down meant no. Palm up meant yes. Before the night was over, they had uh, worked uh, out other signals in their hand and finger code. One finger meant I'm hungry. Two fingers meant water. But most of the time, Little Willie just asked questions that Grandfather could answer, either yes or no. And Searchlight to seemed to know what was going on, for she would lick Grandfather's hand every time he made a sign. The next day, Little Willie began to prepare for the harvest. There was a lot of work to be done. The underground shed where the potatoes would be stored until they could be sold had to be cleaned. The potato sacks had to be inspected and mended if need be. The plow had to be sharpened. But most important, because Grandfather's old mare had died last winter, a horse to pull the plow had to be located and rented. It was going to be difficult to find a horse, because most farmers were not interested in overworking their animals for any price. Grandfather kept his money in a strong box under the boards in the corner of his bedroom. What do you think a strong box is? Kind of like a safe. Huh? Little Willie got the box out and opened it. It was empty! Except for some letters that Little Willie didn't bother to read. There was no money to rent a horse. No money for anything else. For that matter, Little Willie had no idea they were broke. Everything they had needed since Grandfather took sick Little Willie had gotten. At Lester's general store and credit against uh, this year's crops. No wonder Grandfather was so concerned. No wonder he had gotten sick. Little Willie had to think of something, and quick. It was now the middle of September. The potatoes they had planted in early June took from 90 to 120 days to mature, which meant they must be harvested soon. Besides, the longer he waited, the more danger there was that an early freeze would destroy the crop. And Little Willie was sure that if the crop died, Grandfather would die too. A friend of Grandfather's offered to help, but Little Willie said no. Don't accept help unless you can pay for it, Grandfather had always said, especially from friends. And then Little Willie remembered something. His college money. He had enough to rent a horse, pay for help, everything. He told Grandfather about his plan, but Grandfather signaled no. Little Willie pleaded with him, but Grandfather just repeated no, no, no. The situation appeared hopeless, but Little Willie was determined. He would dig up the potatoes by hand if he had to. And then Searchlight solved the problem. She walked over and stood in front of the plow. In her mouth was the harness she wore during the winter when she pulled the snow sled. Little Willie shook his head. Digging up a field is not the same as riding over snow, he told her. But Searchlight just stood there and would not move. You don't have the strength, girl. Little Willie tried to talk her out of it, but Searchlight had made up her mind. The potato plants grow about two feet high, but there are no potatoes on it. The potatoes are all underground. The plow digs up the plants and churns the potatoes to the surface where they can be picked up and put into sacks. It took Little Willie and Searchlight over 10 days to complete the harvest, but they made it. Either the dirt was softer than Little Willie had thought, or Searchlight was stronger, because she actually seemed to enjoy herself. And the harvest was a big one, close to 200 bushels per acre, and each bushel weighed around 60 pounds. Little Willie inspected the potatoes, threw out the bad ones, and put the rest into sacks. He then put the sacks into the underground shed. Mr. Leeks, a tall man with a thin face, riding a horse that was also tall and had a thin face, came out to the farm and bought the potatoes. Last year, Grandfather had sold the crop to Mr. Leeks, so that is what Little Willie did this year. We made it, Grandfather, Little Willie said, as tears of happiness rolled down his cheeks. See? Little Willie held up two handfuls of money. You can stop worrying. We can. You can get better now. Grandfather put his hand down on the bed. Palm down meant no. It was not the crop he'd been worried about. It was something else. Little Willie had been wrong all along.
that's the end of chapter two. Oh my goodness. I'm wondering what could it possibly be that was wrong? For sure, I thought it was going to be the crops because they're on a potato farm and that's a lot of work to do. But it doesn't seem like that was it. I wonder what it could be. All right. So next up, back in our packet, we're going to flip, uh, turn the page till we see the setting one. So on this page, what you're going to do is draw a picture of what you believe the potato farm in Wyoming looks like. Get as much detail in there as you can. Think about the farm, the house, the road, the um, porch, what's going on that helps us picture where little Willie and grandfather are. And then down here, describe the setting for me in words. Where is it? When is it? What's happening? Okay. And then I want you to think, how does this setting affect little Willie and grandfather's lives? How they live? Think if they lived somewhere else, what would be different? Why does this setting determine what happens? After this page, our homework for today is chapter one and two questions. So chapter one is on the back of the text connections page. You need to answer these five questions. And then on the back of your setting page is cha whoop, yep, chapter two questions. All right, there's seven of them there. Let me know if you have questions. Otherwise, I hope you enjoy Stone Fox so far. I really like this book and we will continue reading tomorrow. Bye.